So, <laughs> hi there. It's Ryan here. Um, you kind of caught me in the middle of something, but I, I figured it, it might be just be a good example. Um, I think today's topic or this video's topic should be about contingency shape versus rule governed behavior. Uh, contingency shape and rule governed, I mean, that's all we got here, right? Uh, polishing a car, there's a whole bunch of things that can go wrong. So um, we talk about uh, contingency shape versus the, which, which, in, which involves the direct connection with the contingencies of, of actually doing a job, right? And actually engaging in the behavior. The rule governed stuff is just following a particular rule. Move your hands back and forth, so on and so forth. So we're gonna look at the differences between those things. Um, so, but in the meantime, <laughs> Let me get back to polishing this thing. I'll finish it up for you and uh, we'll give you an update here in a little bit with some of the more details about uh, what we're talking about with contingency shape. Oh, by the way, I really don't like the term rule governed. It implies that there's this physical thing called the rule which there's not. So I'd really like us to consider, that was weird. Uh, I'd really like us to think more about rule following behavior. So again, rule following behavior versus contingency shape. It's getting in my hair. All right, cheers, see you in a bit. I've been working on the car for a little bit and I just wanted you to know a couple of things. Um, I said that I was gonna come back and I was gonna talk about contingency shape versus rule governed behavior. My gosh, you've probably heard that 50 times in this video alone. Um, so I figured I'd give you a good example here. So the idea is contingency shape means you've actually come into contact with a real contingency. Your behavior is doing something and it's getting reinforced, punished, extinguished, so on and so forth. Rule governed or rule following, as I like to call it, means that you're following a rule and you've learned to follow rules in the past. So you'll likely do that again in the future. That usually works, right? Um, but the moment you follow a rule and do something like this, everything changes. You get into contingency shaping, right? So for example, I might have a rule that says um, for cutting, you know, the first pass, you use wool pads, right? But for buffing, you use foam pads. So well, what kind of foam pads? Well, it depends on what kind of buffing you're doing, right? Um, so I'm um, no product placements here, don't worry. The idea being that the rule, the, the rule following behavior is use wool for cut and then use foam for finish, right? So that's the rule. Uh, but the basic idea right, to go from rule following to contingency shaped is to do something. So what are some of those things that you worry about? Or what are those things that I mean that, that actually create the contingencies? They're right here. When you're doing cutting and buffing, I mean, this this isn't a really sharp body line. You can see it right here, right? So there's the body line there, and there's another one up here. Well, if you overheat the paint, guess what happens? You burn through it. Well, that's a, not a good thing to do on a brand new paint job, is it? So um, you don't want to burn through your material. Well, you have to learn that feel. You have to learn when, when it's just getting too hot or when it's just getting too dry, right? So you don't want to do any dry buffing. It's always wet. So you want to, So there's the rule following again, right? Make sure you wet buff or wet cut. Never get it dry, right? And you feel that once you get into the contingencies. And, and when you run into a Punisher, man, on a car, it's expensive. You know, it could be thousands of dollars of a Punisher there, right? simply because you have to redo a whole section of paint. Tape off the lights, why? Because have you ever tried to get that junk out of the grooves in your car? Man, it's awful. So through contingency, contingency shaping, I learned to put the tape on there, why? Because all you have to do is pull the tape and it's clean. All right, so one of the other things that kind of started out as rule following is these little guys. Um, so my beautiful camera person here, my wife is hiding up behind us. She's probably gonna run into one of those as she pans across. Um, so, oh, these little wonderful strings hanging, right? So somebody once told me, hey man, when you hang your parts for paint and you need to make sure that they're like uh, out of the way and nothing touches them, you know? So, so you know, I do little, I paint little things like this for my, my kid's car and all sorts of little goofy things. Well, how do you, how do you paint that, right? You can't set it on something. You gotta do something with it with the string, right? So you hang this thing up. So my buddy Jason taught me to hang stuff. Right? Why? Because it makes it easier. He said it first. There's the kids. Uh, he said it first, and then I tried it, now I understand. So I went from a rule, switched into contingency following. And the cool thing is, is that rule following behavior got reinforced. Why? Because the contingencies um, shaped me, right? Because I followed Jason's rules, and it worked. And it totally made me want to follow Jason's rules again in the future. And as a result, I do a lot of my body work and car work similar to how he does, because, hey, I trust him. His rules worked when I tried them. 
So again, strengthens rule following behavior. It also strengthens it specifically to one person. Or pers and it, I mean, it does generalize, but it, it can often tie in with one person. So that's what these things are for. You could also think of it as generalization, but that's not really our topic today. But uh, generalization, you know, I mean, this is just a string. You're using it to hang for paint and anyway. So you get the idea. See you soon.